Years ago, believe it or not, I was once a young, fresh-faced cyclist just starting out on my serious cycling adventure. At the time, I was fortunate enough to have a couple of old fellas and proper old-school cyclists give me the benefit of their advice. Advice that stood me in fantastic stead over the years and indeed that I'm using to this very day. Fast forward 40 years or so and now I'm the old fella and the old school cyclist. How on earth did that happen? And what I'm going to do today is pass on 10 tips that they gave me back then for cyclists who are beginning their own cycling adventures today. So no particular order, the first tip that I'm going to give you is that just as you're approaching home after a ride, always change your gear into the highest gear that you've got. Now this doesn't really matter if you're using the electronic systems like SRAM RED or DI2, but uh, the reason you do it if you're using a cable gear system is because the effectiveness and the crispness of your gears relies completely on the cable tension being correct to the rear derailleur. Now, if you don't shift into the highest gear, so basically if, if you don't leave that cable in its slackest position, you're putting unnecessary tension on it. So if you do that um, over a long period of time, this could introduce some stretch to that cable and it would make the gears and the shifting less effective. The next tip that I would give is to always try to make eye contact with the drivers of vehicles entering the road that you're cycling along. So what that means is basically here in the UK, if a car is approaching you from a junction on your left, or if you're in another part of the world, a car approaching you from a junction on your right. Now the last time I was involved in any sort of an accident, it was exactly this situation. And the first thing the lad driving the car said to me was, I'm sorry, I just didn't see you. And I kind of get where he was coming from. He had his eyes looking for cars, uh, and when he thought the road was clear because there were no more cars, he pulled out, but he just didn't see me. And as a result, I ended up in a rather abrupt juxtaposition on his bonnet. Now, making eye contact with the driver of a car doesn't always guarantee that they've seen you, but at least it gives you a fighting chance and the ability to do some sort of evasive maneuver if they do pull out on you. My next tip is very simple and straightforward and is particularly useful if you're doing a long ride. Always try to plan your route so that you're riding into the wind on your outward leg and then that way, when you get a little bit tired, you've got the tailwind pushing you home. My next tip probably only really applies to cyclists here in the UK, and that is to join British Cycling. Now I'll say now straight away that this is not sponsored in any way. Uh, the reason I'm recommending it is because I personally have been a member of British Cycling for more years than I care to remember and I found it particularly useful. One of the main benefits for me is the public liability insurance policy. So basically, if you were to run your bike into somebody or into somebody's property and cause them injury or cause them damage, they can cover you in that regard. And if somebody were to run into you and cause damage to your bike or injury to you, they will uh, cover all the legal expenses and everything and cover you in that way. And as an added bonus, when all of these people start moaning about cyclists should have insurance, you can say, well, actually I do. My next tip is in a similar vein, and that is to join some sort of cycling club. Now it doesn't have to be a formal cycling club, it could equally be one of these informal social media based cycling groups. And that way you'll have plenty of people to ride with when you fancy it. And plus you might also get lucky and there'll be a couple of old fellas and old school cyclists on there that can give you even more advice than I can give you today. Word of warning though, don't 
just join any old group. Try and do a little bit of research because um, it might be that the group isn't quite right for you based on your riding speed. Some cycling groups like to ride fast, some of the cycling groups like to ride slow. So always try and pick a group that matches your skill and your ability. My next tip is extremely controversial and will probably see loads of people wanting me to burn in cycling hell. And that is always wear a crash helmet. Now, I know some people don't wear one uh, and that's completely up to them and that's all fine and dandy. And I know there are studies that say that wearing a cycling crash helmet doesn't actually protect you. But all I'll say here is that I personally would never ride without one. And if it came to it and my head hit the ground, I would much rather be wearing a crash helmet than not wearing one. My next tip is to never go on a ride without taking the right stuff with you. And by that, I mean things like a pump, spare tube, puncture repair kit, multi-tool, food, drink, and of course, money. It also extends to what you're wearing. So not only do you want to have clothing that's appropriate for the weather that you're experiencing right at that particular moment, but you also need to take clothing that you'll think you'll need should the weather change throughout your ride. And while you're at it, there's no point taking things like pumps, tubes and puncture repair kits if you don't know how to use them. So as a bare minimum, I would suggest learning how to fix a puncture by the side of the road. My next tip is to always wear sunglasses or at least some sort of eyewear. Now, contrary to what most people think, wearing sunglasses isn't just about being cool or even protecting your eyes from UV rays and bright light. Even here in the UK on dull overcast days, I'll wear sunglasses or possibly even clear lenses. And the reason I do that is to protect them from things like flying insects and other sorts of uh, things that could be in the air like dust, grit, or even small stones being kicked up by cars in front of you. And similarly, my next tip is to always wear some sort of gloves. Again, they're not just there to keep your hands warm, but they can also prevent them from slipping and sliding on the handlebars when they get sweaty. And heavens forbid, if you were to fall off, they prevent them from getting ripped to shreds on the road. And my final tip is to learn how to use your gears. I know they can be a little bit of a black art, but they are there to help you uh, maintain a constant cadence and it can just make cycling that much easier. So there we go. That's my 10 old school tips for beginner cyclists. Hopefully you'll find them useful and they'll help you enjoy your cycling. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.